In this video we're going to start writing our kernel in C. Before doing that, we're going to set up our bootloader with the concepts we described in the previous videos, in order to load our kernel to memory and start executing it. In order to compile code that runs on a different platform from the one you're using to compile it, you cannot use the same compiler that you use for code that runs on your machine. You need to use a different compiler meant to compile for your target machine. This kind of compiler is called a cross-compiler. Building a cross-compiler can be rather boring, as you need to install quite a lot of stuff. I could take you through the installation step by step, spelling each command you need to type, but you would probably just stop the video and copy them. So if you're trying to compile code for an x86 machine and you're using a Debian derivative, I've made a simple shell script you might want to adapt or use to build your cross-compiler. You'll find it in the description. If you're using Arch, you simply need to use Pacman and Google a couple of package names to translate the script. Once you've done it, if you want, you can share your work with the other Arch users in the comments. If you're using Windows, there surely is a way to do it, but it probably involves a lot of clicking and checkboxes and buttons, and I'll admit they make me a bit nervous, so you might want to use a virtual machine or the Linux subsystem or something. I'll also leave you a couple of useful links to articles about cross-compilers in the description. Once you install the packages, which might take a while, you should have this directory containing these files. If you can find them, it worked. Before using your cross-compiler, you need to add this directory to the path variable. In particular, the two files we're interested in are this one that ends in GCC and this other one that ends in LD. As you surely know, GCC is the GNU compiler collection, which you can use to compile C code. In my case, though, I only managed to make the cross-compiler work with C++, because I would encounter errors by trying to install the C compiler. I hope some of you find a better solution. For now, what I did was just to write my C code in a .cpp file. LD is a part of the GNU compiler, involved in one of the final steps of compilation. It is the linker. As it is rarely used by itself, we're going to learn how to use linker to merge object files and solve their external references. In short, for those who do not know what a linker is, if we compile two or more C programs that contain references to external identifiers and generate object files, we can link those object files and try to solve the references. If all the references are solved, the two or more original programs are merged into one single binary file. We're not only going to use it to link programs written in C with other programs written in C, but also to link them with programs written in assembly. In particular, what we want to do is link our bootloader to a new C program that we're going to write the kernel of our operating system. First of all, we need to combine everything we learned so far about real mode and BIOS to make a functioning bootloader program. What we want to do is load our kernel from disk to memory, clear the screen, switch to protected mode, and jump to the part of memory where we loaded our kernel. Let's do it real fast, shall we? Add the magic button number. Define the position at which we want to load our kernel. Store the disk number in a variable. Copy-paste the code used to read the disk, and change the memory location to the kernel position. Read as many sectors as you can. If you're using a virtual machine and try to read more sectors than there actually are, you might run into problems. We're going to solve this problem later. This interrupt switches to text mode, and as a consequence, it clears the screen. Then we want to switch to protected mode, by copy-pasting what we did in the previous video. And after the start protected mode label, we want to jump to our kernel memory address. Now we are ready to start writing our kernel. The kernel is a program that handles pretty much everything there is to handle, so interrupts, peripherals, memory management, and a lot of other things you probably already know if you made it to this point. We're now writing C code, and the first thing we want to write is a function, let's call it main, in which we're going to print a character to screen. We know the address of video memory, let's just write a character and call our code to memory just like we did in assembly. Since we will need to call this function from the bootloader, the linker will need to solve the references to its name. So we need to define this function as an extern C function. How can we link the C program we just wrote to our bootloader? Well, first of all, I'm going to write a new assembly program called kernel entry. This program will be loaded at the kernel position we defined in our bootloader. So we will jump to it as soon as we get to protected mode. We need to specify that we're writing 32-bit code, declare the main function as external, call it, and jump to the current instruction. We can now use our GCC cross-compiler to compile our kernel and create an object file using this command. We can use nasm to compile kernel entry to an object file using this command, and then link the two object files together using ld. 
As you can see, the output of this file is a binary file. What's left to do is compile our bootloader and concatenate the two binary files. Before trying to run the output binary in the emulator, I suggest you make yet another small step that might prevent a lot of headaches later on. We don't know the size of the kernel, so we don't know how many sectors of disk we need to read. As I said earlier, we need to read as many sectors as possible to make sure to include the whole kernel. The problem is, when we're using an emulator, we might exceed the length of our virtual disk this way, which will lead to a disk error. A way to fix this is to compile this simple assembly program that will generate a binary file full of zeros, and append it to our OS binary. We can now try to run the final binary in the emulator, and sure enough, we'll see our letter printed on the screen. We finally made it, from now on we will be writing the kernel of our operating system. There is only one video left in this series about interrupts, and then I'll leave you to your own design decisions, while well, I'll keep sharing mine from time to time. For now I'm leaving you some exercises that I highly recommend you to try before watching the next video, especially the second one. Learn about including assembly files in your bootloader, to make your code a bit more readable. Play around with external variables and functions, trying call assembly functions from C and C functions from assembly, just like we did with main. This exercise is very important and you will need to be familiar with this kind of stuff before you watch the next video. Read the article about moving the text cursor linked in the description, and write a C function that prints strings. Hi, no, the video is not over yet. First of all, you might have noticed that I should have published this video about a week ago for reasons, and my time off made me realize that making a series is stressing me out a bit, and I really want to make videos about different topics, still computer science or mathematics, but single videos. The last episode is already available as an article, You'll find it for free on my Patreon, you won't have to pay, it's just there. I hope I'll publish another video soon, although the summer is almost over and the semester is about to start, but I have many ideas and I really, really want to share them. Thanks a lot for your support, see you soon.